Let's go to Five Dragons. All right, so Five Dragon. This is the first re-release of the Five Dragon, and generally with the uh, re-releases, you can tell because um, I have the year written on it for the year it's first re-release. Yes. Okay, and this one's a 2020, so this was meant to come out last year. Yeah. Uh, so it's finally arrived. There's the what's the other one that was coming out? Thunder Dragon. Thunder Dragon. Yes. Yeah. So part of the same family. So these particular cars were the generation after the Hotshot. So the Hotshot uh, finished up with the Big Wig. Yes. And then they started a new generation, and this is an all new design. So from some of the feedback we got from yep. those sort of cars, they developed a new line of four wheel drive chassis. So in some ways similar, uh, yep. other ways quite different. Different. Yeah. yeah. So why don't we have a close look inside? Definitely. All right. Put that over there. All right, okay, so we're going to go from the top, top camera. Top camera. All right. All right, ready to go. Here we go. All right. Four-wheel drive. Most noticeable, the body is already painted and already pre-cut. Ah. Yeah. Actually, is that attached, I think? Oh, it is attached. Okay. Let's pick it up like that. So that makes it a bit easier. I mean, the original ones were always all molded and you had to cut them and then paint them up. So... In a way it's good, uh, in a way it's bad because you can't paint it any colour you want, you can't customise yeah. it. But I guess you could try getting another body and doing that. Yeah, but that's definitely. that's a nice start. And this is a Lexan body. It is. It is. So it's a fully Lexan body. What have we got down here? Alright, we've got some big chunky bits. Okay, the blue sections here. These are the uh, suspension arms. So they use... Uh, are they identical? I can't remember. They look identical. They do, actually, yes. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen one of these cars, but it looks like they use the same same arms front and back. It's got a solid link uh, top suspension arm, uh, which you could quite easily change to a, uh, a threaded one. And then on the back here, you've got some of the chunky bits. You've got um, your shock towers. Uh, you've got the battery holders here. Uh, this is a radio tray. Uh, and then there's uh, covers for the uh, drive shafts. These are the hoops to keep the, uh, the links in. On the ends of the drive shaft, body mounts, uh, servo mounts. So this is a fairly tough bit of plastic. So these are yep. the flexible type Very ones. Yeah. Okay. So that's up that there. We got a big bag of tires. Big spikes. Yeah. Big chunky spikes. Yeah. So same size, same width, front and rear. So fats on the front. Got a big bumper here. Yeah. So it's new style bumpers. So it's so. a skid plate with a bumper, pretty much. Yes. So pretty chunky. Very flexible too. Yeah. So it's got two screws here. So what you would have noticed that on the hot shots and the super shots, they had the one screw here yep. that screwed into aluminium, and that tend to be quite a weak point. So they've enhanced that here with the two screws, and a bit more flexible, and wider as well. Right there. Right over here, I like these bits. This is a big chunky gearbox section. Oh. So similar idea with the hot shot. So you've got um, turn around here. So these are the insides. I'll get rid of the reflection. Okay, so all your gears, your diffs, and your counter gears all mounted here and are sandwiched together. Yeah. And then you've got a bevel gear on the side here, which protrudes. And then you've got a cap that goes over that. And that goes towards the front. And then there's a front gearbox. And this is the side which captures that bevel gear and drives a front diff there. So you've got all the covers here. And you've got this front part, which is the uh, support for... I think that's the support for top of the gearbox, the shock tower. So, very chunky bits. All right, continuing on with that, we've got, got your wheel hub parts. So, this is your... Um, steering knuckles. Yeah, so this is the rear... rear oh, rear hub. Yeah, the rear yeah, hubs. Yeah. And then you've got the C hub here for your steering. Uh, this part here you may not use on this one because uh, this is for the monoshock on the front. Right. So that was on the thunder shot, so you won't use that one here because it's actually got two shocks on the front. And you've got your, your adapters here for your wheels, so they feel like the modern hex adapters. And they're all on one PC, and this one is a slightly stiffer. Stiffer, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here we've got the uh, open monocoque chassis, which is quite a departure from the previous generation. So I, I guess they started working on the, um, the big wig and the yeah. boomerang. They had the open uh, cockpit. So it made sense to have it open so you could get back into it. So yeah. you can change the crystals and, have and everything receiver. else. Yeah. Yep. Uh, easy to keep it all clean uh, and very easy to disassemble for um, maintenance. So it's got quite a solid, solid base. Battery. 
So it's got the uh, the curve sections here for your standards of uh, uh, racing pack. And then here you've got the cutout for your steering mechanism. And then the gearbox at the front screws on the front. Yeah. And then at the back. So it just sits inside here. All neat in one piece. Alright, something new. Uh, well, I guess it's new with a uh, retro car. So they come with the speed controllers, the electronic speed controller, which is designed to work with the brush motor it comes yeah. with. And then also it can use some mild uh, brushless motors as well. And here we've got the wheels. So these have got the. Uh, Bit hard cool. to see there. They've got the three spokes. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, chunky. It's, chunky, it's a very. Chunky, yeah. A very late 80s design. See a lot of real cars with sort of designs like that at the side. And they're identical. So same width because the tyres are the same Front as well. Yeah, the same, yes. Yep. And they're quite stiff. So they're right, over here. Protect, yep. Protector, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So this is the cover that, that covers the whole monocoque. Keeps all the uh, the big chunks of dirt out of the way. Got a little hole here which uh, helps you screw it down. Let's play carbon as well. Very tough. So you could paint that if you want to. Clear is nice, I, I think. Classic antenna, antenna. Yes. Alright, so you probably don't need the whole length these days, but uh, you know, modern radios, you probably don't need this much these days. So, that's a nice touch. And then we've got a box full of little screws and stuff. That's it. From yep. suspensions and, and all the gears and everything. Yeah, so all made. your screw bags and stuff are in here. So we'll probably we'll leave this intact yeah. because that's a bit of a, a collectible thing. And then we've got the decals. Yeah. That looks really good actually. Yeah, nice. I mean this is very classic, the caution. Yes. On and off switch. Yeah. The hot one. Keep yes. your fingers away from the resistor. Yep. yep. So it doesn't have a resistor in this, but um they bring back a lot of memories of burnt fingers. I've done it quite a few times. The number seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. I don't know what the number seventeen is actually. Let's see if anyone knows why it was that number seventeen. There must be a reason. Must be. And you've got Koro Koro Racing Team here. So you've got it there as well. Do with that. Yeah. Yep. In the Japanese. So you've got Koro Koro Comic. So a lot of these cars sort of um, had comical origins yeah. too. So they linked up with uh, animation. But very nice and colourful. You can see. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yes. Fire Dragon right there. And then you've got the manual. So manual is like all Tamir manuals. All very clear. So you've got your uh, description of what you need, tools. your tools, and then you got your step by step. So you build in the gearbox first, and here's where you uh, sandwich it all together. You get your bevel gears that go to the front, building it up, motor mount into the side. Uh, was there something about the motor mount on this? I've got a feeling there's something different about this motor mount. Well, I'll, I'll find out. I've, maybe I'm confused, but I think this one's an aluminium one. Yeah, right. Uh, but we'll find out. So it's got all the different holes there for um, uh, your perfect uh, ratios for particular sizes of... Um, Binions and yep. gear ratios. Yeah, yep. makes it easier so you don't get it wrong. You've got perfect um, uh, meshing once it goes on. And then you've got all your suspensions getting built. These are shocks. shocks. Yep. Yeah, quite nice because it's got four shocks. Got uh, sway bars as well. Uh, then all your radio gear gets installed. Electronics, motor speed controllers. Yep. That's how your cover goes on. Cover all your electronics. There's a, a little short um, propeller shaft for a center. And then there's the classic um, instructions on how to do the body, although the body's already done. So no need to cut. And that's it. And then your, your parts listings. So hence these dark parts are the parts that you don't need. So these are yes. the bits for the monoshock before. Yeah. That was a radio tray, because you don't use a uh, speed controller or mechanical yep. anymore, yep. you don't need that. Yep. And then these shock towers aren't used for this model. It's different ones right there. Okay. Very good. That is a Tamiya Fire Dragon 2020 yes. edition. <laughs>